Hey guys, Daily Tech here, and today we're going to be looking at one of the coolest tools that you can find for custom VR. If you're not using an Oculus Rift or a Vive, this is definitely something that you should be checking out. If this is your first time visiting my channel, thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to click that subscribe button if you enjoy all different types of custom VR. Now previously you might have seen one of my videos where I featured Walk-In VR. Now Greg who's the developer of that has decided to take that software and turn it into something much better. And that is precisely what we're going to be looking at today. Now the purpose of that software was just so that you can use your controllers to move yourself around the room. This was beneficial for a number of reasons, however the program offers way more now. What's been added to it now is that it seamlessly incorporates all different types of head tracking and motion controllers. Because previously, to get all these different things put together, you had to run all different types of scripts. And a lot of times, you had to use the OSVR server, which can be kind of confusing to use. And as you modify it a little bit further and start mixing things, you need another plugin called OSVR Fusion. Now, as good as that software was, it wasn't the easiest thing to use. Now, for driver for VR, you simply select what kind of head tracking you're using right out of the list, and it combines everything all together. There's no configuration needed, it's really just drop down menus and auto detecting. Some of the examples of headsets that you can use with this is the Oculus DK1, the DK2, Pimax, Deepoon, just about any other headset that's HDMI attached that doesn't have its own head tracking or controllers. And the ways to get tracking on this is any kind of free Pi input, so that includes the virtual HMD done through PS Move Service. But if you don't want to go through all the setup of that virtual HMD, you can also use the Kinect. One other really cool combination that you can use with this that's super cheap is using an Xbox Kinect and the Leap Motion together. The Kinect's going to give you full head tracking and the Leap Motion is going to give you virtual Vive controllers done with your hands. So that is super cool as well. Using the Kinect for this, I thought I was actually doing something wrong because of how simple it was. But I tried starting it up and it just worked straight out of the box. Now the one thing that is partially working but still under development is the Nolo controllers. Once a few bugs with this has been worked out, you'll be able to use the Nolo with the DK2 and any other headset. Now just think, it might be possible to get full 360 degrees room scale with an Oculus Rift DK2. Now since this is only one developer working on it and the amount of time he's put into working on this, he is charging for this app. Now I'm not entirely thrilled that we have to pay for this app, but the alternative is there's a lot of configuration and I spent many hours trying to get this to work properly. And thinking back on it, if I just did one hour of overtime at work, it would have paid for more than just this app alone. So the amount of time savings that it's going to give you is well worth the money because it's only about 10 euros right now. Now luckily the program is free to try so you can check it out to see if it's working with your type of setups before you buy it. Now I just recently found myself a Pimax 4K headset used online. Got myself an awesome deal on it so now I get to try out putting the motion controllers with this headset. I tried it out a couple times using a few different systems and it was absolutely seamless and it'll work great. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check out a few different combinations on how to get this stuff running and then we're going to give each one of them a little bit of a test. First thing we're going to do is we're going to check out the Pimax to see how well this works with the PS Move service and the free Pi head tracking. Secondly, we're going to go with the Pimax again and we're going to see how well the Kinect works with it for head tracking. That way we don't have to worry about any kind of free Pi configuration to get the head tracking working. And lastly, we're going to try the PS Move service and the free Pi head tracking with the Oculus Rift DK2. Now you may be asking, why would I want to do that with the DK2 when it has its own sensor for head tracking? Well the problem is, is that one sensor for the DK2 is only front facing. Because anytime the headset is covered up by the camera or it's out of sight of it, head tracking just completely goes away. So that means it's only a front facing headset unless you're using something like this plugin. And we're going to demo how well this thing works when it's in full 360. So let's head over to the desktop, we'll fire up Pimax and get that working with the PS Move service and FreePie. Alright, to get head tracking working with Pimax using FreePie, you first need the Pimax software running. Then need to make sure that the FreePie script is running, just as you normally would with the RiftCat setup. You'll also need to make sure the PS Move service is running. And lastly, the PS Move FreePie bridge. Now that everything's running and Driver 4 VR is already installed, all you need to do is run Steam VR and Driver 4 VR should start up right away. Okay, now the Driver 4 VR is started, you'll see that it automatically detected that I've got a couple PS Move controllers plugged in. 
And this is the part where it's just like walk-in VR, where you could select what type of motion action you have for the different controllers. So if you want to use one of the controllers to move and one of them to rotate, you can do that as well. You'll also see in here that it automatically detected my VR headset and which driver version it's running for driver for VR. And we'll just open up a quick mirror here so we can see what's going on. And then we'll click on start driver for VR. And you'll see that this icon is turned green now, meaning that everything's activated and connected. Okay, so here I am in Steam VR. You'll see that everything's working, and of course, I have full head motion tracking with the PS Move service. This virtual HMD will give you full range of motion, so you can go all the way down to the ground. You can lean over to the side and even walk forward and move right around the room. The cool part is, is that you're actually fully 360. You can look right around and you can move around the room. And then from here, you can just start up any game as you normally would, pick on something in your list, and then that's about it. So let's go check out to see what happens when you use the Pimax with the Kinect. Now I'll be using a Kinect from the Xbox One in this example. To connect that to your computer, you'll either need the adapter from Microsoft to get it connected, or you can use your own workaround that I have a guide listed in the card in the top right again, that'll show you how to make all of that for free. So just make sure that you've got the SDK installed from Microsoft. Then of course, make sure your Pimax is running as well, so you've got the display going to your headset. And then you'll just need the PS Move service running for the two motion controllers. And from here, we'll just start up SteamVR. Now that everything started up again, all you need to do is select connect from down in the drop down. And like I said, I'm going to use the connect one for this. We'll get the mirror up and going again. And what we can do is we can just hit start driver for VR. Now your connect should automatically turn on at this point and we can actually take a look at the output of the connect. So if we click on the settings button, we'll just see it right here. All right, so you can actually see that it's tracking me right there in the little settings window. It's just tracking my head, so you don't even actually need the headset on for it to track you. If you watch, for example, the Steam VR mirror, you'll see that as I move forward, it all moves forward, and as I move backwards, it moves backwards. And the same thing with left and right, and I can duck, and then stand up again, and it's gonna track me everywhere I go. And then the last one we're gonna try today is gonna be the DK2 with FreePy. So of course you need the FreePy script running, You'll need to make sure your Oculus software is up and running as well. You'll need to make sure the PS Move service is going and the PS Move Free Pi Bridge. Now you just start up Steam VR and everything should connect with Driver 4 VR. Alright, Driver 4 VR is started and you'll see that again my two PS Move controllers are picked up and it's automatically detected, the Oculus Rift DK2. And then from here, we're just going to select FreePie again. Now while I have this open, I might as well mention too that NOLO is still under development. There are a few things that need to be corrected still, but this program has been updated quite frequently, so I do hope to see that fixed quite soon. So we'll just stick with FreePie, and then we'll start Driver 4 VR. We'll get the mirror going again. So anyone that has an Oculus Rift DK2 is going to know that this is not a 360 degree headset. Because the camera is just in the front, it needs to see the front of your headset for anything to work at all. However, with Driver 4 VR, it's using just this tracker on top of my head for head positioning. So moving left and right, that's actually just that ball on top of my head that's doing the tracking and not the DK2 camera. And to prove this, we can turn right around from where the camera is and we're still going to have full tracking up and down, left and right. No matter which way we look, it's always going to track just fine. So in my opinion, this added way more life to the DK2. Because a lot of games are 360 and not being able to turn fully around made the DK2 a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now it's actually gonna work just fine and you really shouldn't have any problems at all with any kind of 360 degree games using this setup. Now those are the only combinations we're gonna go over right now. However, there are many other combinations that you can do. Be sure to check the Driver 4 VR website and Greg's also posted a few YouTube videos on a few different ideas that you could do with this type of setup. And if any new features come up for this in the future that I think is really relevant that might be really cool, I'll definitely be demoing it for you guys as well. So again, if you wanna try it out, check the link in the description below. Just create an account real quick to be able to use it for free for a week just to see if it works out for you. Well, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, remember, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you next time.